All right, and we're back up. At it. I forgot to change this. Can I change that? Change. And change it to, where did I put it? There it is. Changing the thumbnail. And I think we're back. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. No, nah, let's just leave it. So, let's try this again and hope it works this time. I just can't stand a laggy stream and I'm not gonna subject anyone to doing it. So, I'm hoping just, rest oh my God. I'm hoping just restarting OBS helps, but it might just be this game for some odd reason and it just my computer just doesn't like it today and i'm hoping that if all this fails i'll just flip to vanguard and play zombies or something because i don't know why this game is giving my computer so much bloody trouble but it is because that's just the kind of day i'm having apparently so i'm going to share my shenanigans to twitter because i can and game all right, let's see here. What the hell? What is going on, guys? So much delay. So much delay. Jeez, this is hot. Nah, let's... Ah. Uh, love it. Love it. Love dealing with this. So much fun. <sighs> Screw it. Over it. Time to just shoot zombies because I'm over it. It's so crazy how my computer is not cooling itself. <sighs> Man, I get this kind of shoot the I just get so frustrated because I think I, I think I have it down and then when I start up something that shouldn't force my computer to do anything too detrimental, it just goes straight to hell and it drives me crazy. Because, in all honesty, that game shouldn't make my computer lag. That is a, that is a three-year-old game. Plus, I played it before, and I've never had an issue. Maybe because it's super late at night. I don't know. But, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. Oh, and of course, now I get to restart it. Come on. Let's restart. And everyone's playing uh, Overwatch, and I just don't want to play Overwatch because I am terrible at those types of games. I don't like hero selection games, and so it just doesn't work out. But... I'm going to go back and delete that old one. Cheers to Speedy, who always comes in and just likes my stream, no matter what I'm doing, no matter how bad it's going. He is a homie, and I appreciate him to the fullest. So. Anyway. I'm just going to test typing out something in the chat. There we go. Say hello. Be nice, please. There we go. And zombies. So that's the way that it looks when I drop something in there. Cool. All right. So. Now this, watch, this game won't load now. Loadouts. Gunsmith. Customize. Q. 
camouflage. Oh, I'm almost ready on that one, aren't I? Cool. All right. So, um, do I have double XP right now? I don't, but I've got double XP available. So let's do that. There we go. And we're going to go to Duran Fong, Duran Fong solo. We're back to what we know because the computer just decided that what we didn't know was dangerous. So here we go. But anyway. Okay, frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Because everything was going smoothly, everything was fine, and then all of a sudden my computer decided that it did not like that game, which is stupid. This is Professor Kraft. Okay. Open all barriers so we can stop Oberfuhrer von List. He has bonded with politics. The enemy of the team is you bonded. Nice, that timing was great! No. I refuse. I straight up refuse. But, okay. So, what I was talking about was a particular, um, a particular YouTuber by the name of Sneeko. Who was immediately, uh, not immediately, but all of his social media accounts were all just eliminated all at the same time. So, I am personally not a fan of that. And I get that he, he was deplatformed for a reason. But I stand by the fact that anyone who has their in entire job eliminated just all at once i just don't i don't believe that you should because it is much better for someone to be heinous out in the open than have to cultivate an audience in the dark where you don't know what they're doing and you don't know how they're saying you don't know what they're telling people you don't know, understand what their what their purpose is and because they're not out in the open, so you, so all you're all you're doing is creating an echo chamber that begets more people being heinous and hateful. Because you just want to, you're under the guise of protecting people. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Yes, I did. That was that was special. I have. Oh my goodness. That was. I have never died that quickly before. Man, I must be I must be aggravated. It's been a long, long, long week. I just I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know where I am half the time. And uh, this is the uh, This is what this is the result. This is the result. No. Excessive shots. Yeah, it's a better idea with this one. So, I'm going to not talk about Sneeko because I don't want to anymore. And as messed up as it sounds, several people did warn him that what he was doing was going to end with his, not his elimination, but definitely with him being silenced. And I do I believe in everything he says? No. But are you definitely creating more of a what in the world are like coins. Spin wisely. more of a echo chamber and more of a grouping of people that are looking for some kind of acceptance but and they're finding it in the hands of people who you don't want them talking to because all you're doing is you're taking everyone who believes that they're being unfairly treated unfairly per, uh, pre people are being prejudiced against them then they're all going to gather together and they're going to start cultivating these beliefs on their own even if they're completely unfounded and then you have a significant portion of people who think that the world is supposed to be fair and that the world isn't a completely unfair location in that 
life is not supposed to be easy and life is not supposed to be handed to you. Honestly. Sorry, I thought my wife was calling me. But, again, I don't want to talk about it anymore because I'm just kind of over it. And uh, I don't want to be a drama farmer. I don't like doing that. I don't like being a drama farmer. It's not my favorite thing to do. So, what I'm going to talk about is old school animated films. Old school animated films are some of my favorites. Um, and I have been rediscovering them recently because of random news articles that have been shot to me, random, uh, uh, random news articles that have been shot to me, random, uh, trailers that I have come across and I find them to be quite fun and I find them to be quite entertaining. So... One that I watched recently is called Wizards. So Wizards is set in the very far future after the world has blown itself up. And there are two brothers. And the two brothers are both magic users. And both of them are from different a different uh, sides of the same coin. So one of them is a light wizard, one of them is a dark wizard, and they're uh, they're both they're both born from the same woman, obviously brothers, but they're they look completely different and they both have completely different viewpoints. They do. So what the reason this is fun is because is because again. These, mo these movies were actually meant to be a bit fun and a bit funky and weird. And that is just so much of what's missing in so many modern day movies that it's very frustrating because I want them, I want movies to be fun and interesting and you want stories to be fun and interesting. But if your subject matter is stupid and every time you accuse it of being stupid and as opposed to the author or the showrunner or the actor admitting oh no no what we worked on is dumb you get lectured at and said called all manner of different things then all you're going to end up with is a stupid all you're going to end up with is just a stupid populace who doesn't understand what good writing is so i went back and i went and found um went and found that grouping of movies and Wizards, I find, found very, very fun just because there was so much of the day, the years it was made in the writing. So the good wizard was definitely a hippie and talks about joy and love and it gets him into trouble on occasion. So much anger. So much um, and so it was very funny in that regard and he was flirty with the attractive female character, and that was fun, and I missed that as well, you know, just... So, because it just doesn't exist anymore. And so, it was just a lot of fun to watch, and you got to see all the visuals. So, the cool part about these particular animated films is that there was so much of different animation styles that were all shoved into a single movie so they had animated over um they had animated styles over actual acted out pieces they had animated um come see me i am in the building to the on. left of the theater is that understood over oh that was really stupid There's to me never an end to this is there um so they have that level of animation. They have different. Uh, they also had hand drawn animation. They definitely. They also had still life animation, where they would just animate a singular piece in there. And so it. it they also weren't afraid to use color. They weren't afraid to use, try something, try new things, and it was very evident. Hello. Thank you. There we go. I'll pick that up. Did that? Did that? It, of course it didn't fill. Why wouldn't it fill? Okay. And we're running. There we go. Oh, crap. 
That was stupid. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, crap. Okay. So, there is a particular series of those movies that are very easy to find um, because all of the animation styles ended up kind of blending to ended up blending together and making its own unique animation style. So, another good movie that I do want to actually rewatch, I haven't watched it in many, many years, it's called American Pop, and it's a examination of the uh, American pop uh, music culture that came from uh, post World War II, I believe, that not a lot of people have actually drawn attention to. So call it uh, the Elvis era, where things all of a sudden started becoming, you know, music. Certain certain types of music started becoming more popular than others, and then it was the pop genre. It's very very intriguing, and all of it looks as if it was acted out. So I found it to be quite. I, I remember watching it many, many years ago, and um, I remember the story being intriguing, and I mean, the acting and the voice acting is not all that great, but as time has gone on with the, uh, with the advent of anime and, uh, well, dubbed anime, and with the advent of extremely good and talented people coming up and becoming voices for animated characters, it has become a more of an acceptable job for an actor to do where even you know people like christian bale played the voice of howl in howl's moving castle and so it's not as if actors will just turn their nose up at it as i show my mouse up actors won't turn their nose up at that these jobs they'll take them because they know that having their voices in the um in the common in the public ear in the public eye that that is a good idea so there is that to consider i suppose um but back then definitely overacting huge deal what it was a huge deal in a lot of the things that they were doing in those uh in those movies it was very very wow very very obvious go but anyway um so there are a few other ones that are definitely more adult in nature that i would definitely suggest staying away from unless you were okay with that um one of uh, american pop actually does fall into that line where they are it's a lot of hello um, where uh, it's a lot of drug use because, of course, American pop. And there are war scenes and death scenes. And so something to be aware of. And sometimes, even though animated is not as... Um, doesn't seem as violent it can be pretty it can be pretty gnarly honestly if you're not prepared for it so anime is pretty ridiculous in that way so uh for those of you who have never watched berserk that is i think one of the most violent animes in existence and the story is great but it's it is very uh i would say heinous some of the subjects that they talk about in that show uh, are not for the faint of heart. Let me put it that way. And I would not suggest anyone who is not okay with sensitive subjects to watch that. And um, But if you are, it's one of the greatest stories in animes and mangas that's ever been created. And that has kind of been an accepted standpoint of that. So, if you ever get a chance to watch it and you can stomach it, definitely worth a watch. But, oddly enough, it's actually from that same time frame as well. But, well, it's 1996? Oh, shit. I believe it's 1996. But, I am not 100%. And, every single one of my... Um, Every single one of my friends who are into anime has watched it and suggested it. I have not watched it in many, many years, but it is, I have been, I, uh, from what I can remember, it's very, very good. 
and the story is probably the best part. But you cannot have a character such as the main character whose name is Guts be as powerful as he is without going through some trauma. And the trauma he goes through is particularly heinous. So, not in, of course, when you look at him, you're going to see, if you look him up, you're going to see that he has uh, a missing limb, his arm. But believe it or not, that's actually not the worst thing that he goes through. So, all I could say is definitely watch it if you can. But don't say I didn't warn you because it is one of the rougher ones. Mind you, I do have to say that. W I was disgracing what has be uh, what has now become one of my favorite animes, which is called Goblin Slayer. Ooh, ray gun. Victory. Um, so I've told multiple people about this anime, and the reason that I disgraced it was because at the very, very beginning when we first watch it, and at the, the one of the very first scenes is a very, very suggestive and rough scene. Then not. The concept is great, but the other co the other part of that is the reason the concept is great is because they actually treat goblins as as they would treat humans, and that is very very difficult to watch. They don't show anything incredibly incredibly bad, but there's a lot of suggestive themes that are leading up to it. So I end up shutting it off because I watch uh, I watch animes with my wife and she wasn't having it. So as an example for for anyone who's listening, I don't watch Game of Thrones even because I, I can't handle that level of crazy. It's just not my favorite thing and I do not enjoy that level of nihilism, sexual violence, uh, overall violence, violence for the sake of violence. I, it's It just basically turns into horror porn for lack of a better phrase. And... Sometimes, if the story is good enough, I'll just ignore it, but it's very rare where I will run into a story that is good enough to make me ignore it. It's very, very rare. I think I have only maybe done that twice in my life, and I regretted it, well, I regretted it in the time, and I still regret it now, just because I, I'm such a visual person that even this, if this was just real people in me just laying in, laying into people like this, just regular people, I don't think I could do it. It's because, on if you're actually playing competitive and you're and you're doing, um, if you're playing competitive, uh, search and destroy thing, things like that, then uh, that's completely different because you know that there's someone else on the other end of it. It's not very very not real you distinguish it in your head but and there's also someone that you're competing against and if this was just you know shooting random people me personally don't think i would be a fan of it but i don't know so yeah old school old school animated animated shows i uh, it's pr not shows movies would be your best bet it is amazing to ever watch it if you ever get a chance to um, so I would definitely recommend Wizards. However, I will say that if you watch it, it can be a bit rough because it, um, the imagery is quite stark and it is very, very evident that what they were pursuing for those, mo for that movie in particular was very, uh, they wanted to draw a distinguishing feature between the uh, the main character, the main character, the good characters, and the dark characters. But the dark characters, of course, they needed to create caricatures of uh, caricatures of old school Nazi um, uh, old school Nazi soldiers, because the entire concept of it is one of the wizards finds old school Nazi propaganda, and that's the way he convinces his army. Uh, to fight for him and he convinces he essentially just plays a bunch of Hitler's old uh, Hitler's old speeches 
and then he uses that propaganda as part of convincing his own army to fight because he and he convinces that the people he convinces that his soldiers that the people who they're fighting are members of the Jewish community. So it's really really cool, but for sure gave me weird dreams, and I will admit that it gave me weird dreams. So there's that to consider. But all the rest of it is a lot of fun, a lot of cool, a lot of cool imagery. I and they also took it in the viewpoint of someone reading the story and then it's acting out in front of you while the story is being read. And that I think is always fun and not enough not enough writers or showrunners do that. And so yeah. Definitely a good choice in that regard. Hmm. I don't know why. Um, but, so... I also talked about American Pop. Oh, for those of you who are kind of okay with these kinds of movies and renditions, and all I can say, it's better than Rings of Power, but... The there is an animated movie for The Hobbit in The Lord of the Rings. For those of you who do not know, is it the best thing in the world? By no means is it the best thing in the world, but it's very fun. The music is very very good. It was uh, written and performed by Glenn Yarbrough, who is an old folk and not country, just folk singer. Was part of the Limelighters and. All of the composing of all of the songs was very, very well done. So I, those are the songs that I remember to this day. As a, don't get me wrong, the the songs from the Hobbit movie are probably the main reason why I remember anything from that because it was they did such a good job on the songs in in the live action movie. But they decided to add a. Uh, a love story element to it which is very very weird and that one I do not understand but yeah so if you watch that movie for any reason at all watch it for the music because the music is quite good and the animation is so cute and nice and it just reminds you of when you were a kid and watching uh, watching uh, animated shows at home and it also is reminiscent of probably the first American anime, as opposed to, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender. But it had that flat graphic feel to it. So it, if you had to pick something that was a precursor to anime in the West, that would probably be it. But So someone chimed in for two seconds, and then they ended up whoop, dipping out. So that's nice of them, but... Let's change that out because I don't need it. And I'm going to go get some armor. Get some armor. You see, he always flirts with me that way, but. Oh boy. That is a bit dramatic, wouldn't you say? I do not want to deal with you. I do not want to deal with you. Okay, 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 calm down. Alright, time to run because I would love to make the most of this. What? Okay, reload, 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 reload. Thank you. What? So, it's actually really easy to find as well. All you need to do is type in animated hobbit, and then you should be able to find it relatively simply and relatively easily. Uh, even though simply and easily are technically the same thing. And give it a watch. And you can make fun of me all you want, and you say that this is cringe or, you know, X, Y, or Z. I miss happiness in my movies and TV shows. I miss... A time where I didn't have to worry about bills and didn't have to worry about being politically correct, offending people all the time. I didn't have, I, I could just be a kid and I could, didn't have to worry about what anyone thought of me. I didn't have to worry about 
All I had to worry about was how I was going to get my homework done. And if I didn't get my homework done, how I was going to lie my way out of it. That was all I had to worry about. Back then. So, definitely reminds me of a simpler time. Mind you, it all that one also, the, the animated one also manages to capture a lot of the... A lot of the culture of Hobbiton and the culture of that area of England that Hobbiton was based around, which should be the Yorkshire Dales, honestly. But don't quote me because he talks about uh, J.R.R. Tolkien had talked about what the motivation was for that area, and I just don't remember what it is off the top of my head. But uh, another good one is a little movie that I really enjoyed that was called Flight of Dragons that I picked up from a blockbuster when I was 12 when my mother happened to be out of the country at the time. And I watched it with my father. That movie was quite good. And it was an intriguing idea where there, are, there were two dimensions that ended up branching off from the uh, original main dimension. And what that allowed was the development of two let me see if i can actually just load up some music because i'm over it um hold on and boom awesome and i do need to rewatch that it has been a way too long since i've watched it that one is definitely much more kitty though that one so if you're in the market for more of an adult style anime, there's that one. Well, animated film. It's not an anime. Let's be real. And uh, X film sacrifice transmit. Fine, let's do transmit. So if you want to get more on the racy side, there are a couple of movies that you could check out. One of them is called Fritz the Cat. Now, Fritz the Cat is a due to uh, smoking too much of a certain substance, let's say, he ends up being able to travel dimensions. And that's the entirety of that movie. And Stay he close. is also a really screwed up, uh, screwed up character. And uh, it, th that one is a lot more, a lot lighter in its subject matter, but oddly enough, it is not much lighter. Call it a call it an odd combo, but uh, if you can get all the way through it, it, you should probably get all the way through it at least once. Um, and because that was definitely an era that more people should be aware of, in my opinion, because people always love to assume that they know about the history of animated films. They know about the history of cinema in general. And then you show them things that they have no knowledge of that they've never experienced before. And I'm gonna blow you up. Thank you. And then all of a sudden their entire world gets turned upside down. And they're so confused because they thought they knew. They thought they knew, but they don't. So Fritz the Cat is definitely on on along those lines that but again if you're a bit of a prude and you don't but if you're a bit of a prude and you don't like the idea of watching the what I would qualify as one of the precursors of uh, the the furry movement then don't watch this film Let's put it that way. So that is something to bear in mind before watching it. But I watched it many, many years ago when I was making bad decisions in my life regardless. So, but I'm just trying to think through all of the random animated films that I've watched throughout my life and how much of it has just gone by the wayside. It has gone away and no one actually knows what was part of it. Even still, think about the fact that Recently, they decided that they were going to re-release a couple of different characters. Um, call of the week. 
Nope. Um, because I don't have anything that does that. Um, that's fine. But, so as an example, for those of you who do not remember, there was an animated TV show that was produced by Jackie Chan. It was called The Jackie Chan Adventures. If you have never watched it, I believe it's probably one of the m most interesting sun Saturday morning cartoons that I have ever watched in my life. Because it's, it is definitely fun. There was so much fun that they had on that set. There was so much fun that they did. And, um, and I remember bringing this up to people and there, and all they said was that show was incredibly racist. Now, under normal sets of circumstances, I might say you could have a point, but the difference is that Jackie Chan was the one who made it. So how is it? I, I get confused whenever someone says that something that was made by a member of that ethnicity is racist. And especially considering that it was one of the things that he wanted to make ever since he was a kid. He always, w and he talks about it in the show. He always wanted to, he always wanted to make an animated show. He always wanted to be a superhero in an animated show and he made himself one. And then people go off and just call it racist because th there are archetypes in there of the of a person of Asian descent. And out of everything, I don't know. I, I, I it bothers me when people paint such broad strokes with stuff like that, and especially when they don't know the circumstances around it and the fact that Jackie Chan himself was super excited to make it. So well, who are you to come in and say, well, I know better than him, the person who made it? That part has always confused me. Mind you, a lot of people have a tendency to lean on stuff like that because they can't actually create a decent explanation as to why they don't like something. And there, uh, if you didn't like it, I understand that. You, well, that's all you need to say. You don't need to haul off and call everyone who likes it racist. That's stupid. And especially recently, that appears to be the only thing that anyone can ever say about someone who disagrees with me, like disagrees with them, is, oh, well, this person's just, a, this person's racist. Where are you getting that from? Did uh, did they say anything? Did they imply anything? What, 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 what exactly is your beef? And uh, I just get so frustrated because all that does is it shuts down the avenue for discussion. And... You can say that, well, what would you, what use of discussing would you have, uh, discussing anything would you have with a racist? And then in response to that, all you have to do is you have to, oh, wow. Um, you have to tell them about Daryl Davis. Daryl Davis is one of the most interesting people on the planet. What he would, he was a jazz musician, is a jazz musician, and he has de radicalized more members of the Ku Klux Klan than anyone else in history. And all he did with these people is he spoke to them he spoke to them and he just convinced them that their viewpoints of his particular ethnicity were unfounded and were propagated on a lie that's all he did and what is that what does that require that all that requires is being nice and talking and now all you do is you have people just immediately saying, well, that's racist, he's racist, and not actually having the discussion. And I'm not talking about a debate either, because there's nothing to debate, but a discussion. All you need to do is talk to the person, and you, you should be able to convince them of your point. If all you're doing is getting angry about it and um, frustrated and uh, you just start you just want to start yelling then you should probably re-examine how exactly your brain works and if whether or not you're the person who should be making the arguments. So as an example, if you wanted to argue foreign policy, I am not the person to argue with about it because I don't know it. I, I have my viewpoints of it, but I've never been put in a position where I have to figure out, uh, so it's just Harvest or Exfil, huh? Um, I've never been put in a situation where I've had to figure out how to de-escalate 
de escalate de escalate a uh, two foreign powers who are at each other's throats. I've never had to do that. I could probably figure it out based off based off of the way other people have done it, and whether or not to show strength or to not show strength is uh, a good idea. But it, it, it's trial and error in that regard, and going that's just something that you don't learn from school. That's something that you don't learn from. It's just something that you have to learn by doing, and. The only issue with that is that you have usually have you usually only have one one shot at it, or else uh, everything kind of goes by the wayside. Okay. Okay. There we go. Alright, so that worked. Alright, so that's number two. Whoa, I hear him, I hear him. There he is. Oh, crap. Okay, this is, this is, this is very shitty. This is very shitty. Yep. Yep. Oh, crap. Really? That's stupid. Oh, that killed her. Okay. Oh, for the love of God. Really? I'm gonna die. Oh, crap. Oh, boy. This is not good. This is where I die. And I'm out, I'm out of... I'm out of that. Boom! I can't believe that worked. <sighs> Man, I'm gonna need to exfil. That was, uh, that was intense. That was intense. There's a reason I do not like that one. It's difficult. It's difficult to do with just one person. It's much more difficult to do with two. But... Okay. Um, cool. Good to do that. Oh, allies, you have come such a long way since your first long visit. Long Come in, come in. All right. Oh boy. Okay. There we go. Just gotta shoot the masks. Thank you. Took care of that. Oh, look at that. Going to Jiggly Town. All right. What in the world? Okay. So, fill that up. Okay. Um, I don't even remember what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Um, but do 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 do. Don't remember. Must have not been important. I hear him. There it is. Pardon me while I assume the broom the boom trier's gender. My bad. Where are the female boom triers? But Ah oh man. Well, one thing to also bear in mind for me, next weekend, I probably won't be able to stream. 
So I am actually going on a hunting trip on Saturday and I have to be at my buddy's house very, very early on Saturday morning. So I will try to stream Friday afternoon, well, Friday night, but for sure not a guarantee because um, I don't know. I would love to get some sleep. So there is that. I am definitely going to try though. I am I am I have been doing this for quite a long time. And um I want to just continue even if it's just talking me talking to myself. I know that Speedy was here for a short bit and I appreciate what he's done. Thank you. Sweet. It's up to you, soldiers. This I can accomplish. I have no idea how to get in there. No idea how to get in here. Skull is shattered. There we go. Oh, and of course there's one of those. Why wouldn't there be? It was just too easy if it was just the guy who was doing the shooting. And we're running. Cool. So that takes care of that. Now I just need to take care of this one. Zabala the Deceiver. And reloading. Funniest part is that uh, in a small room, this character is easy. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I needed to do. Need this. What is this? Hello. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, that is, that is slow, slow going. And it just doesn't zoom in quite nicely enough, does it? Oops. Oh, look at that. X Games mode. Oh, what? No. Yeah, of course, there's a shooter over there. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. But if I do end up helping my buddy take something down, I will be sure to let you all know. Because I believe that more people should hunt. I think it's a good experience outdoors. And I don't know. Just a multitude of reasons, multitude of factors. Enter a portal. There is much to be done. Now, I can't remember if I talked about this movie or not, but I spoke about it last night. And with uh, with my mother, who happens to be visiting. And oh, I can feel it working. it's a movie called The Outfit that is very, very recently made. And what it's about, it's about a tailor shop or a cutter shop in Chicago during the 1960s. And the tailor shop happens to be where the, um, one of the highest level of, the highest levels of mafioso for one of the families happens to shop there. And the entire movie takes place in one room. The, I don't think I've ever done this one. Let's see how this goes. Um, the entirety of it takes place in one room. Never le it never the camera never leaves that room. So cool. Get give them points for doing something unique. Um, but the writing, because I had to re-examine it. Because so even if I, you know, have spoken about this before, I had to re-examine it from a writing perspective, because I had to understand why I didn't like it. And not to say that I w wouldn't watch it again, and that I ultimately hated it. 
but there was definitely something about it that seemed off. Now, now, the difference though, here, whoa, crap, that was blocked off, um, so, there is definitely a moment, actually a couple of moments in the movie, that, where it was definitely evident that they wanted it to be smarter than it was, and unfortunately, when someone is writing something that's a little bit, writing, trying to write something that's a little bit beyond their own skill level, it becomes very obvious. Because it's sort of like someone who has never been exposed to anything medical trying to write a medical drama. You know the fact that they don't understand half the stuff that they're writing, but they're writing it anyway. So. I always got that impress. I got that impression definitely from. I got that from that movie for sure, and they also had a a pretty terrible tendency to repeat themselves multiple times, and they also chose their word choices overall was very very strange, and just didn't really make sense, especially for the time frame. And it was very obvious that they actually didn't have a vote, a extremely large vocabulary because they had a tendency to repeat a lot of words. They had a, they, anything that they were proud of, they repeated it multiple times as well. So I think that was probably one of my bigger issues with that. But aside from that, it was a decent story. Uh, the main actor was very, very good, but again, if you can have the best actor in... Hold on. Critical in direction. Oh, that explains that. Um, so, there is that. With the outfit. But if the even if the actor's fantastic, if the writing doesn't match the acting, then it's just not as good. And it's very, very obvious. Oh, crap. So, mind you, there have been multiple different movies and shows that the uh, actor definitely carried it. And needed to carry it. But it's few and far between nowadays because there's so not a lot of good actors out anymore. And not to say that I could act better, but I've met several people who could, and they don't get jobs because they happen to not be pretty people. Are they ugly? No. They're just not pretty enough. And they also don't, man, they don't hit the boxes that all of Hollywood wants to hit. And so, you end up with incredibly attractive people, all, who, all of whom tow the party line, all of whom do what they're supposed to do. And then you uh, kind of eliminate the talent pool with people who can actually do the uh, who can do the job. And especially Hollywood, Hollywood is one of the only places in the world where if you can fail upwards, I do not understand that. Literally any other industry, if you fail too many times, you end up getting fired. Hollywood is one of the only ones where that is not the case. So, it's so funny because I guarantee you there's been multiple people who have come in today to the stream. And they see the fact that I'm talking about crazy, crazy stuff. And then they dip because they're just like, well, why don't you talk about the game? Because talking about the game is boring. Why would you want to sit here and talk about a video game where all you do is shoot zombies? Is there a story? Yes. Is it a good story? No. It's actually kind of, kind of tragic that they had an interesting idea and then just didn't follow through with it because reasons so what is this I no longer serve the oh okay that's good that's a marksman uh, marksman rifle that's fine but anyway 
even if nothing else happened, I for sure would still be here talking to y'all because, and you, by y'all, I mean the nope, uh, the only people who ever do show up to the stream. And for which, anytime anyone does, I'm very, very grateful. But, oh man, unfortunately I have not seen some all, all of the normal people who do chime in. Be them Nikki and Speedy. And I'll take partial responsibility for that because I can't control my stream very well. And one day I'll figure out what exactly I need to do. But probably get, probably get two streaming PCs, but unfortunately just me and I can't really afford it so I'm just gonna continue with what I'm doing because I enjoy it hello no shit Sherlock but oh goodness what is this a people's storm huh Assault rifle. You cut that. No. You don't need an assault rifle. You need a marksman rifle. Because it works better. Mm hmm Okay, what time is it? It's 912. Hmm. Drop it down. Did I? I already grabbed it what I can't grab from there. All right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about today, but there wasn't a... Okay. There wasn't a heck of a whole lot that I wanted to talk about today, which sounds stupid, considering I do talk a lot in general. But this week was kind of slow, kind of boring. I did a lot of fun things this morning and this afternoon, but... You don't need to you don't mean to nag but what are you doing now so i just hope that everyone is having a good day and that they're enjoying their life and they're enjoying their time because if you aren't that is just sad it's just it i i want you to i want everyone to be happy and it's it's a terrible it's a terrible standpoint to have because not everyone is ever going to be happy <laughs> Von List calls the shots, but his demon empowers his army. Kills them, and his power ebbs. Oh, the really? They come from up there? Well, that's frustrating. For those of you who are wondering, this is when I die. Because I am not a very good shot, and this is just so not the not the rifle to do this. And I haven't done a blitz that lasted this long before, so. Thirty-three. Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh boy. Time to run, time to run, time to run, time to run. Oh, come on. Can you all go up the stairs, please? Whoop! Throw that. And throw that. I'm gonna die. This is when I die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. And of course, oh, I've got one more. There we go. Why aren't you dead yet? Thank you. Crap. Crap. 
Oh, that's too bad. I was so close. I haven't died on zombies in a while. So, I'll take it. I'll take it. Usually I exfil before then. <sighs> anyway. Yep. Sounds about right. Let's see. Whoops. Let's take a peek. So I unlocked a lot of magnifiers here. But the only issue with that is I do not have, so it's a hip fire. No, that's fine. Did I unlock all of them? I'm so close. Uh, I'm 88 away. Got all of those, of course. As a result of an equipped covenant? Oh, that's ridiculous, but okay, I'll take it. Okay. Armory. What? What did I unlock? What? How do I have that? I have no idea how I have that, honestly. Um. Okay, customize. Equips. Okay. Sweet. That's fine with me. Calling cards. All right, that's fine. I'm gonna go here, go to multiplayer real quick. And weapons. Load out. Kit. Surplus. Oh, plus 20 to kill XP. Cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been that time. We started a little rough, but we ended the best way that we could. I hope you enjoyed today's stream. If you did, I would really be grateful if you hit that subscribe button down below. And if you didn't, please tell me down below why you didn't like me. I will accept it. I have thick skin relatively. So I'll go ahead and leave you for this evening. I'll be back on Sunday morning for Sunday Morning Nerd Talk. Please chime in. I would be grateful to anyone else's opinion. So until then, though, I'm going to chime off. Chime off. What is the, what's the term? Oh, what's the term? Sign off. And uh, I hopefully will see you on Sunday. Bye.